everyone and thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. This is my first official YouTube recording and I'm so excited to be starting my channel so I'm very happy and thankful that you're here with me. Today I'm going to be walking through this card. This is the card that we were going to make at my uh, workshop, my Alta New workshop this last weekend for 3D embossing folders. But we got so involved going through all the different techniques that we really never got around to making this card. So today I'm going to walk you through it. And it's so beautiful, but here I'll hold it up. It's so beautiful, but it's also so easy you won't even believe it. The first thing we're going to do is make these stripes down the edge of our card. I don't know why, but I really like this style of card. No matter what you're doing in the middle, a lot of times I really like adding these little stripes on the side because it seems to me that it kind of frames whatever you're doing. But one of the challenges is what color do I make them and how do I coordinate with whatever else I'm doing in the card. And the easiest way for me is just to ink these up with the ink color that matches the card. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We start with an A2 size card that is four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches long. Here's the ink colors that I'm going to be using. Frayed Leaf, Pink Alicious, and Caribbean Sky. So I'm going to take the Pinkalicious ink and all I'm going to do is open it and use the ink cube to go down the sides until there's no white showing on this strip right here. This is going to be our pink strip on the side of our cards. Just as easy as that. It takes no time and it's super easy to do. Just make sure you don't have too dry of an ink cube or an ink pad. Just like that. And then we're going to set it aside to dry. So the next thing we're going to do is take our embossing folder and I am using the Majestic Bloom 3D folder by Altenew. And I want to talk about folders for a minute. Let me get my black piece of paper back here. When you open your folder, any folder from any company, there's going to be what's called an embossed side and a debossed side. The embossed side is where the background is raised up and the debossed side is where the flowers or the pattern is raised up. And you can feel this and you can actually on this one see it quite well that on this side, this is the debossed side because the flowers are raised and this is the embossed side because the background is raised. Now why is this important? Why it's important is because when this folder folds together, the deboss side pushes those flowers up into this side, and it depends what you want your card to look like as to which side you might choose to ink. We're going to use the blue ink today because we're going to put this blue background on our card. And again, you can use whatever color you want, whatever embossing folder you want. But I'm using the blue, so I'm thinking, okay, I want my background to be inked. And if I want the background to be inked, I'm going to ink the side where the background is raised, and that's the embossing side. Now, a hint about that is that in all of the Altenew folders, except the first two or three, they have their name up here of the folder, and when you open it up, the side with the name on it is always the embossing side. So if you want to ink the background, you just ink the side that has the name on it and you'll be, you'll be good. So what we're going to do is just take our ink cube or ink pad, and we're going to run it along here and ink this raised section. So when we talk about inks, what I have found is that pigment inks work better at this than dye inks. But I'm purposely using a dye ink today because I want you to see that dye inks will also work. In the Altenew line of inks, I find that the ones that work the very best are the mixed media inks uh, because they have a kind of a partial pigment base to them and I like using them for this so I use a lot of the frayed leaf for this 
inking the background. The problem is, is that those inks don't come in very many color waves yet, so you're kind of limited on what you use. I've also heard that the um, Distress Oxide inks work really well for this. But today I'm wanting to stick within the Alt New line, and so I want to show you that even, even these dye inks will work. I tend to ink it quite a bit and make straight lines across because you don't want it, the pattern to look all swirly or anything. You just want the background to be solid. So you don't have to push down very much. You just have to do this. Now, if I see a place where it's needing some more, I will put some in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just an illusion. I am a perfectionist, so when I first started doing this, if it didn't turn out just exactly perfect, I would just throw it away. But I have learned that by the time you get the card finished, it's going to look great, so don't worry about it. I'm putting a little in there. If you care about whether or not any of the blue ink got into the flowers, you can use a Q-tip and just clean it out. But I think I'm fine. I'm just going to do one more pass on this. And then we are going to put our cardstock into the folder and run it through the die cut machine. Now this piece of cardstock that I have here is four inches by five and a half. And the reason is because I want to leave that edging on the side for the pink edging. I'm just going to put this right here in the center on this side. I'm going to use this side so I don't mess up the ink that I put on there. I'm going to close this up and I'm going to put it in my sandwich and then I'm going to run it through off camera for you. Okay, I just got it out of the die cut machine. Let's see what we have here. I need to put my blue ink up. And there you have it. I did get it a little dark on these leaves, but I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to be inking it up anyway. So you can see how the background is that pretty blue. Now, I want to talk for a minute about your sandwich. When we did the 3D embossing workshop on Sunday, I talked about how the very most important thing in doing 3D embossing folders and using them is figuring out what sandwich is right for you. So I want to talk just for a minute about that. I discovered what was right for me by complete accident. One of my Gemini Junior plates actually cracked and broke and I had to order new ones. While they were on order, I thought I want to use a 3D embossing folder, but I didn't have my cutting plates. And I had been having trouble trying to get my 3D embossing to look right. The paper was cracked and things were happening that I wasn't happy with. And I tried spraying it with water and that didn't seem to work for me. And so I was frustrated at the time. But what I thought is, you know, I have my old Big Shot machine and I'm going to pull out my cutting plates from the Big Shot and I'll just run them through with that and see what happens. And guess what? It came out perfect. And the reason was because for my machine, now this doesn't mean for every Gemini Junior, but for my machine, the pressure the way it is, the, the uh, Big Shot cutting plates, as you can tell, they're very used. They are just a little bit thinner than the Gemini Junior ones. And it was just enough, you know, less thick that it helped my my paper to go through it and not have all the cracking and all the problems I was having. So it was by pure accident that I discovered this works for me and I've been using it ever since and I'm super happy. Now you'll see that I had put in for this a metal shim and and the reason is when something when I really want something like this I wanted that ink to press into the background so I added just a little metal shim to be sure that that I got that pressure. But otherwise, that's what works for me. It may take some perseverance and it may take some frustration for you to discover what is best for you. You know, it's trial and error. But once you discover that, you can use any 3D folder and it'll come out perfect and it'll be easy to use and no frustration. So just take the, take the time and persevere and you will be super happy with it when you do. So that's 
the most important thing you can do. So now we have our card here. I put it on black because I thought it might show up a bit better. And what we're going to do next is just super easy. We're gonna take our pink ink or whatever you want. And I'm just gonna take the ink cube and just gently run it over the raised areas of my flower where I want it pink. And it's just really easy to do. You just use the little, I use the kind of the edge on the, on the um, corner of the ink cube and just kind of run it over where I want it to be. It does, again, it does not have to be perfect. This is an illusion. You're not trying to cover every little bit of white. You're trying to give an illusion of a colored flower, not a solidly colored flower. So you just want to do it until you're happy with it. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks good. Let me hold it up here. Can you see that? See if the focus will work. There we go. Look how easy that was. Super easy. Now we're going to do the same thing and I'm going to use frayed leaf on the leaves. I am going to show you an alternate method also so that, let me pull my camera down a little bit, see if that will focus better. Um, here's the same way we did with the flower. Just inking the, the little ends of it, inking the leaves just a little at a time just where you think it needs a little bit of color. And here is that. But what I have found is for tiny areas like leaves, I tend to be really careful and I don't want to get that green on the background of the blue. So what I do is use one of the detailed blending brushes, which is super easy. I love these things. And then you can just you can just put it in your ink and you can kind of just fill it in where you want it to go. Again, you're not trying to make them solid green leaves. You're just trying to get the illusion of green leaves. The texture of having some white, some blue, and some the color of the leaf just adds dimension to the whole card. And look how easy that is. I mean, it's really no big deal. And here I've got some blue on the leaves, but you know what? That would have bothered me. It doesn't bother me anymore because again, it's the illusion. It's the, it's the dimension and the overall look of the card. And even though I would prefer that I didn't do that, let's be honest, it's not worth me throwing it out. It's going to be fine in the end and I'm not going to worry about it. So here I am just going around the edges. And I'll show this to you when I'm done. Just have a little bit left to go down here. And these up here, and I'm done. So now let me show this to you. You see that? Look how great that looks. It's super easy. So what we're going to do now is make the sentiment. So I got my Misty out because I'm ready to do my sentiment. I chose a sentiment from this set by Altenew, Friends Forever. I really love the sentiments on this. And the one that I'm using today is this one that says, you're all kinds of amazing. So I'm going to take a piece of just small white cardstock, put it in my Misty, and put my sentiment down. And pick it up. And then I am going to use my anti-static tool because I am going to emboss this. Now I'm going to use my pink, Pinkalicious ink 
to stamp this and I know there's some people that say they wouldn't or they can't or whatever emboss dye inks but I am telling you I do emboss it dye inks and I do it quite a bit because I like to have my sentiments really look uh, polished and I find that that by clear embossing them it just makes them stand out better on the final card so I like to to do my sentiments with em clear embossing if if they're black then I can use you know black the black uh, ink the pigment ink and that's fine but for colored ones I, I like to do them with dye ink and then I just go ahead and clear emboss them and they stay wet long enough for me to do it so here I've got my sentiment I've got this paper that's got my pink ink on it and I'm going to get my clear embossing powder and just put it right over the sentiment and that looks good I have just a little extra on there okay put this back into my container And then I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute and heat emboss this um, off camera because I don't want you to have to listen to my heat tool. Okay, I finished embossing this and I don't know if you can see it, but it has a really nice little sheen shine to the lettering and it makes it look very polished like that. So I have chosen to cut it out with one of these featured sentiment dies. And here is the one I picked, and I'm going to get some tape and tape this on here. Just get it all straight. And put it in my regular die cutting sandwich and here I have my sentiment and now all that's left is putting the card together so again so easy all we did was ink the sides of of the background panel with the pink ink then we did the blue on the inside on the embossed side of uh, the embossing folder and then we just chose an, our sentiment. And now I'm just going to use um, foam tape to put it all together. So uh, Altenew has foam tape now too, but I have so much on these huge rolls that I have not purchased any yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on here. I just really love using these embossing folders. I'm going to be putting on some additional YouTube videos here on my new channel um, showing how easy it is to make so many different varieties of these. So I hope that you'll tune in and find some more that you'll subscribe to my channel. That would even be better. And so you'll know when I put them on, I would really appreciate that. I would also appreciate it if you would Give me a thumbs up or even a thumbs down. Make comments, good or bad, so that I can improve. And um, subscribe if you would like. And I will be putting on some more of these as soon as I can get them made. So I'm just taking the release strips off the back of the tape. And I'm going to put this right onto my card. just like that and then for the sentiment I've been using these strips 
Um, I used to buy different ones, but these are long and I they come in such a great a great bulk that I um, that I really like them. I get them from from uh, scrapbook.com. So I'm going to put some of these. I think I'm going to use three across. There we go. Okay, put this around right side up. That would help. And then put my sentiment on. These are great little strips to put for sentiments or really small spaces. Anything that requires a small piece of adhesive. Even a shaker card. Okay, I'm going to put this right down here. You're all kinds of amazing. All right, and then I'm just going to finish up with a few of these enamel dots. Let's see, I think I'll put one. Where do I want this one? I think I'll put it right there and put another one down here. And we're done. And there it is. The final card. Isn't that pretty? You could do it with whatever embossing folder you want, whatever inks you want. And it's really so quick and easy when you just do it and you're not having to explain it all for a video. It's very fast and yet it's so pretty. So anyway, there's the card for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you'll subscribe and that you'll come back. Thanks very much and blessings to all of you. Bye-bye.